So what's this plate you got here? So this plate comes down and it comes down just enough so when I slide this table saw out and I can drop it down and the handle is just on the edge. So it makes it easy for one person so to load it and unload it. So it's a plate. You can just roll it there. That's and, right. Yeah, wow. it's just, just to make it a little easier on the back. And I see you've got your uh, Vestal track saw rail store up in there. I have, correct. I got my two four-footers there. I got a square and my eight-footer is down here. And then there's that your saw stand. That's uh, that's a saw stand there, and even even behind here, where all I have I have accessories. I have additional storage back there for a laser. System. I can't believe you just use such a cheesy joint on there. I know. A dovetail? It's just Man. Fly, it's, it's <laughs> only plywood, you know. <laughs> a dovetail box. Everybody has those, well, right? Well, you figure things are going to get beat up and moving around. It's it's got to stay together. Gotta so stay together. now, what else have you got there? Do you, you were saying something about these little rings up in here? So I have uh, these two rings here. I have a. Uh, similar rings welded to the toolbox side and over there and I wanted to be able to get four by eight sheets uh, stood up in here so when I stand them up I got two latches I just tighten them in and it fits in there perfectly. So you pull it up there real yeah. tight. Because obviously I can't lay a four foot wide sheet. No and you don't want them sliding around don't in here. Don't want them sliding around it. so I can lock in cabinets and everything. Okay well, you're going to show, show us where the compressor is. So the compressor lives here and I occasionally will throw another uh, chop saw in the middle or something right over here in the middle. This is hooked up to everything. Uh, yeah, that's just an extension for the occasional flat tire when I'm working right out here uh -huh. uh, with hand, hand and power tools. Um, I also have an additional power cord hooked up here. Now, what's powering that? Where's the, you got an inverter? So somewhere? I have an inverter. The inverter is on the other side of the truck, and I can show you that also. Cool, I'd like to see it. Yeah. Here we go. All right. Oh, wow. You got more in there. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll start with the simple stuff. Yeah. Um, so. I have a retracting cord reel, which isn't retracting so well right now, so okay. it doesn't it's always coiled. work in the cold, yeah. and uh, so that that's there, and because everybody does need fold, folding uh, camp chairs when they're eating lunch in the nice... Sure, when side. you're watching TV, you don't want to stand no, up in there. Yeah, you're right, so those are those are folding <laughs> camp chairs with backs, and I always keep, uh, just in case there's an emergency, some jumper we always cables. have some jumper cables there. So I had um, I had a larger inverter in here at one point. I've downsized to a 3,000 watt. Uh -huh. um, I found that I don't have to run the truck as much with a lower wattage inverter. Uh -huh. So I downsized with that. So this, uh, and then this system here, it's a battery minder. So when I have the truck plugged into the wall, what the battery minder is doing is it's keeping a trickle charge on the truck batteries because with an inverter, it, it really, it really puts uh, a sore spot on the battery. So Did you have to like put a different kind of battery in the vehicle or are you just using the stock no, battery? No, I'm using the best deep cell bat truck battery that I okay. can get, two of them. So, and then I have behind there, I have a, a double, uh, or a three relay system, which uh, allows the system to automatically toggle between the inverter and then um, house power when it's plugged in. So it automatically switches latches, back and switches forth. Back and forth right? Cool. I noticed when he came over here, you had a whole rack on the side with some uh, quick tie. Yeah, so. What is that? This is, now this is only a 14 foot box, and quite often we're buying 16 foot moldings. Yeah. So what I do is I'll lay my moldings on here and, yeah. I'll, and I'll strap them on. And, and you've got uh, like a, a rubber got a little rubber. So you don't scrape it, yeah. just make it slide. And they're actually ladder, so you can hang your ladders on here too and just strap them right in. It's, it's a great system. And you got upper also, same upper thing, also. just more molding. I'm not that tall, but I do use it occasionally. Well, I know you got a ladder in there. I do, I do. <laughs> and to continue with the electrical, I have another outlet. This might seem in insignificant, but because I'm, I do a lot of commercial mill work and I'm always at loading, loading docks, so I'll back up to a loading dock and I can't get to the side of the truck to plug it in. Uh -huh. So what I do is I'll back up, I'll take a cord, I'll plug it in at the loading dock and I'll plug it in here since I can't get outside the vehicle. So at that point, another relay switches because um, if if the cord is plugged in, you don't want this powered up. So automatically, the truck senses where the power, what source is coming from with the power, and it disconnects that so you're not back feeding and no one accidentally touches it and uh -huh. it's electrocuted. Wow. So that's why that one is And there. I noticed you had some little bitty lights up here. I have some small lights up here, and uh, those are just for working when it, uh, when it gets dark, and uh -huh. uh, it just lights this area up nice, and I, I can see both on and off the truck. Wow. Very cool, Brian.